The moment we've all been waiting for is finally here. SpaceX has been ready to launch its second Starship test flight for less than a year now, and we're going to witness history in the making. In just over a day, we'll see a spectacular rocket show unlike anything in the world. So brace yourselves, because this is going to be a thrilling ride. How did Elon Musk react to this milestone, and what will Starship achieve for the future of space exploration? Join us as we explore these questions and and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On Wednesday, November 15th, a surprise announcement was made by the Fish and Wildlife Services. The FWS determined that the rocket launch and subsequent damage to the pad infrastructure had no long-term negative effects on the surrounding ecosystem, according to the agency report. Still, SpaceX will help mitigate damage to the area by reducing sound waves and vibrations, assisting in fire suppression, and providing launch pad protection, the agency said. With with this, every part needed for the FAA license is in place. The only missing stone is the signing of the FAA for the launch license modification. And not to keep us waiting for too long, right after the FWS made the announcement, the FAA officially granted permission for Elon Musk's SpaceX to launch its high-soaring Starship rocket into space for the second time. The FAA has given license authorization for the second launch of the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy Vehicle, HSC officials wrote in an emailed statement. The FAA determined SpaceX met all safety, environmental policy, and financial responsibility requirements. SpaceX posted on the social media platform X shortly after the green light that it was targeting Friday, November 17th for Starship's second flight test. Of course, the excitement from SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk couldn't be missed. He responded to a post on Twitter, or X.com, with excitement guaranteed, confirming to all of us that this Starship launch is sure to shake the world with high-level stimulation. It's going to be absolutely remarkable. And I know I speak for many of us when I say that I can't wait. The scheduled launch window, lasting two hours, will begin at 8 a.m. Eastern. SpaceX plans to livestream the Starship launch with the webcast starting approximately half an hour before liftoff. The towering 400-foot rocket is expected to take off from the Starbase spaceport during the two-hour launch window, just after sunrise over the Gulf Coast of Texas. The weather forecast appears favorable for a Friday morning launch launch, but the launch team will assess upper-level wind conditions throughout the countdown before giving the green light for liftoff. According to reports, citing advice from the FAA, backup launch opportunities are scheduled for Saturday, November 18th and Sunday, November 19th. If SpaceX executes its flight plan flawlessly, the Super Heavy Booster will ignite 33 methane-fueled Raptor engines for over two and a half minutes, propelling the stainless steel rocket through the atmosphere over the Gulf of Mexico. Following this, the booster will detach and attempt a controlled descent into the Gulf. Meanwhile, the upper stage of the Starship, equipped with six Raptor engines, will ignite to accelerate towards the necessary velocity for a stable orbit. Starship is expected to complete about three quarters of a lap around the Earth before re-entering the atmosphere to perform a targeted landing in the Pacific Ocean north of Hawaii. This upcoming launch will be a perfect piece in the Starship's orbital conquest, following the Ship 24 and Booster 7 test campaign that ended with an explosion back in April. However, SpaceX has no intention of repeating that scenario this time. In September, Musk announced that the company had implemented over a thousand changes to the rocket since April. These new features, some of which are substantial modifications, could pave the way for the world's largest and most powerful rocket to achieve orbit for the first time. First off, SpaceX has added a vent between the two stages of its rocket. This is evidence of a bold change for its next flight, hot staging. This section will redirect hot exhaust gases from the six engine on the upper stage away from the booster when it falls away. This addition will help Starship increase its payload capacity by about 10% and make the stacked Starship rocket slightly taller than the rocket that flew earlier this year. Next, SpaceX engineers have enhanced the shielding capabilities in the booster's engine compartment and tightened the bolts on the engine skirt to eliminate fuel leaks observed in the April launch. Changes to the Starship design before the upcoming launch. This includes transitioning from hydraulic actuated thrust vector control to electrically controlling the Super Heavy Booster's 33 engines. Speaking of upgrades, the flight termination system is indispensable for Starship. In its first flight, the rocket was due to have separated from its booster, but it didn't. It was activated to explode, but everything didn't happen immediately. That system, called the Autonomous Flight Safety System, did set off explosives in the rocket, but only after an unexpected delay, SpaceX said in a statement 
on September 8th. This abnormal behavior prompted serious scrutiny from the FAA. After that, SpaceX acknowledged the issue and took steps to address it. They have not only enhanced the AFSS, but also requalified it to enhance system reliability. Recently, they've equipped Starship with this upgraded system. Lastly, SpaceX has upgraded the launch pad for Starship in South Texas. This change aims to prevent a recurrence of damage to the launch pad observed during the first Starship launch, where concrete blocks beneath the launch pad were blown away and debris was scattered. SpaceX has decided to tweak its approach by adding what Musk called a water-cooled steel sandwich to the pad. The pad has now been fitted with two thick steel plates along with a water deluge system, essentially a gigantic upside-down showerhead. The launch pad has also been reinforced with 35,300 cubic feet of high-strength concrete. This approach has raised concerns of its own as the water used to cool the pad could constitute industrial process water, which is tightly regulated in the U.S. Generally speaking, the system at the Starship launch pad is what took federal regulatory agencies the longest time to assess during the Starship launch licensing process. The FAA completed its safety evaluation for SpaceX's new launch license application last month after SpaceX implemented 57 corrective actions to address issues from the April flight. The environmental assessment took more time to complete. Furthermore, under the Endangered Species Act, the FAA required the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to review how the new flood control system might impact sensitive wildlife and the surrounding environment near the launch site. Finally, the FAA concluded that the pre-approved environmental assessment for the first Starship test flight remains substantially valid, that there are no significant environmental changes and all pertinent conditions and requirements of the prior approval have been met or will be met in the current action. Although they've received a launch license for the second launch, it's currently only approved for a single Starship launch. So, both SpaceX and the FAA will have to go through another assessment and licensing process for the third Starship test flight. The FAA is responsible for ensuring that launch and re-entry activities do not pose risks to public health and safety and property safety, and that these activities align with U.S. foreign policy and national security interests. Therefore, there should be no delay because Starship's future role is extremely important. NASA's Artemis program aims to bring humans back to the moon and establish a lasting presence there. That's why Starship is crucial. It's reusable, can carry crew and cargo to the lunar surface and beyond, and it has twice the thrust of the Saturn V, the legendary launcher that sent NASA's astronauts to the moon during the Apollo era. NASA plans to use Starship for the first two human landings on the moon as part of the Artemis program, which will pave the way for future exploration and discovery. In a recent interview, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said he was eager for SpaceX to resume flight testing. Before NASA allows its astronauts on board, SpaceX must demonstrate that Starship can fly safely. The company also will need many flight tests to master how to refuel the rocket in Earth orbit before going to the moon. A very difficult challenge that's never been done before. But will China beat the United States back to the moon? The possibility is quite frightening. It's essential to us that SpaceX be able to test their rocket, Nelson said, adding that a major delay would be a very considerable concern to NASA. Part of that concern is driven by what he said was the space race of getting to the moon before China. And so, of course, we're counting on SpaceX. Well, folks, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Be sure to let us know what you thought about today's topic in the comments section below, because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, once again, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.